Thank you. Well, thank you for having me, Amira, and uh, giving me the opportunity to speak a little bit about blockchain technology and its uh, impact, its potential uh, in the energy sector. My name is Katarina Geisenhardt. I work at PwC in Berlin uh, for a team that we call Digital Energy, and I build decentralized business models for the energy sector with a high focus on blockchain. We work also with other technologies, but um, my focus is on blockchain. Uh, today I will spare you the technological side of blockchain. So if you ever have any questions regarding how we validate blocks or what are the consensus algorithm, things like this, uh, you can refer to me afterwards or refer to my director colleague from PwC Sweden. Maybe you can proudly stand up, Henrik. You just have to look for the tallest guy in the room and you find Henrik. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, to be very honest, when it came to blockchain at the beginning, I, was, I wasn't very optimistic because I come from more a conventional energy uh, sector, so I know the regulation, I know the market rules, um, I know that the infrastructure isn't very digital by now, so I wasn't very optimistic. And it took me a while deep diving in the technology itself, in the regulation, until I was really, really able to say, okay, blockchain is one of the enabling technology for a more decentralized, but also more democratized and stable energy system. We've talked about this uh, already a little bit, uh, about the trends that are reshaping the face of the energy sector today and opening the way for new business models. I'd like to recall it a little bit because I want to show where blockchain fits. So we've been talking about electric vehicle, mobi uh, electric vehicle cars, um, setting energy suppliers and also grid operators in front of brand new challenges. In Germany, we are expecting by 2025, 2.9 million of electric cars. The digitalization of the energy sector, we are having a growing amount of smart devices into households and industry that are giving real-time information about consumption and production. The decentralization of the energy sector, we have a growing share of decentralized flexibilities um, growing by 8% per year in Germany, mainly or also due to private people that are producing their own electricity, having a solar panel on their roof, a little wind turbine, and becoming what we call prosumers. So private consumers producing their own electricity. And those trends, we can see them in a more global way, a more general aspect, because when we speak about energy, we do not only speak about the commodity that is being produced, traded, and distributed, but we are also speaking about politics, about the political decisions that are impact the sector, impacting the sector. We are also speaking about the infrastructure that needs to be expanded. We speak about economy. We speak about people, people who changed their behavior toward the years, towards big utility companies, um, people who are willing to share their bikes, their cars, their homes, and also their electricity. And that is important. And it's one of the first uh, reasons why blockchain started to make sense in the energy sector. So since 2015, late 2015, <coughs> beginning 2016, it's not going to stay white, uh, blockchain really hits the energy sector by storm. And since one of the questions that we get asked all the time since then is if blockchain only is a hype, or if it's going to put the whole energy sector on its head by tomorrow. So very balanced positions. And if you take a better look at it, you realize, of course, we're working in a very in a highly regulated market. There's a reason for that. We have precisely defined market rules. There's also a reason for that. And we cannot talk about electricity <coughs> as being a completely virtual good. It might be a virtual good for the end customer when he pays or she pays for, for the electricity bill but it's still a good that needs to be produced and distributed. So you need an infrastructure that will maintain the security of supply, which makes a completely decentralized business model like we do with Bitcoin um, kind of tricky. And this is what we expect from blockchain. But if we expect something else, it looks differently. And we realized that blockchain did have a very interesting impact in various applications like building a pool of saved electricity and supporting community energy models, the Brooklyn microgrid. A project that we do together, PwC, with the regional utility, the very German Technische Werke Ludwigshafen, so let's say TWL, um, where we put together um, 
uh, operators of renewable energy assets and their neighbors willing to buy electricity directly and locally, and helping reduce uh, congestion measure costs by integrating more renewable energies into the system. And there's a lot of other projects that I will mention um, that are hitting the energy sector today, showing that big utility companies are rethinking a little bit their business model and trying to develop new decentralized business models. So to understand that tendency, at PwC we developed quite early what we call our blockchain energy radar. We published our first study um, uh, beginning 2016 at uh, uh, blockchain chances for the energy supplier and we screened the market. We looked at every initiatives, projects, consortiums, partnerships, uh, start with startups and, and big companies um, that were initiated in 2015. We only found, 2016, we only found a handful of projects, 15, um, mainly driven by startups and early stage companies. And only two years after that, we already found um, a little bit more than 100 of projects. And now we're doing the update and we're around 160 projects with blockchain worldwide in the energy sector. So the, the main idea behind that blockchain radar was for us to understand where is it going? What are the use cases that are interesting for the energy sector? For now, we see mainly use cases around peer-to-peer -peer energy trading on retail, smart grid-related projects, and I will show a few examples that I think are the most interesting. But before I do that, I would, I would like to recall uh, why. Why is it so that so much companies are focusing on a computer protocol? Because we tend to forget that it's a computer protocol. There's so much startups that are flourishing, focusing only on blockchain technology. And to tell a, a short story, for a couple of weeks I had a lunch with a friend of mine. She's working in an oil and gas company in the innovation sector, and I wanted her to know what we do, of course, with blockchain in the energy sector. And she said to me, well, Katarina, you know what, you don't have to pitch, because we already have 15 people uh, in our company who focus only on blockchain use cases for the company. So why is it so that so much companies get involved into that new technology? Because the decentral blockchain model, let us imagine an energy system where some of the actors of the main market actors from today will not become redundant, uh, this is one big mistake that we did with the, in with the internet, but they will have to play another role. They will have to rethink their position in the market, rethink their business model. And this is something that we see in some of the projects that I will mention. Taking the position of the energy supplier. Um, this is one uh, project from Conjoul, it's a venture capital-baked uh, startup from Energy, the ecological sister company of AWE. And what they did is they launched a platform enabling prosumers in two regions in Germany to exchange excess of power generated by solar panels, photovoltaic panels, to B2B consumers in their region, supermarkets, um, hospitals, there's a water company. Um, a school that they can provide with surplus of power generated by their own solar panels. And they do it on the, the, the platform that they built is on blockchain basis. Today in Germany, if you're a private consumer, you do not have the right as a private person to sell your excess of power. But you can't obtain that right. You can go to the Bundesnetzagentur, to the a German uh, energy agency and register as an energy supply company. And then, of course, you have to include a contract that respects information consumer rights, you have to name a balancing group, you have to name a balancing group operator, you have to report load forecast to the grid operator, you have to sell at fixed price, and so on and so forth. So life might be too short, and this is one of the reasons why the energy supplier has today the role of the service provider taking in charge of all that energy-related jungle book and also having an answer to that tendency of consumers that will, that will to exchange the electricity together. And this is what they did, building a platform on the public blockchain Ethereum, having traceability of all the transactions that are exchanged between the consumers and the consumers. 
and building what we call regional power certificates. The technology itself might not be used with all its potential, but the business model is completely, fundamentally rethinking the way participants in the market interact with each other. And that's quite new. And this is also something that the Tenet does. Uh, Tenet is a transmission system operator. So as you may know, they have a highly regulated market. It's a very technical business. Uh, to explain what they do is very complicated too, but um, I had the opportunity to, um, to attend to a conference in Lisbon where this former CEO of the Tenet was there. And we, he presented his company saying, we keep the lights on, which I think is quite shortened, but it is true. And so uh, they have big challenges today when it comes to a more decentralized energy system, because we have a growing share of renewable electricity in the system. The overall power supply tend to become sometimes a little bit more volatile, and what we call transmission bottlenecks becomes common. So TSOs, Tenet, and other ones have to engage in what we call congestion measures. Those congestion measures, wind power complement, fire them up uh, conventional power plants, redispatch, they cost a lot of money to put the price on it. Last year in Germany, 800 millions of euros. So they need to find new ways to maintain security of supply without having to firing up power plants, conventional power plants, but by integrating more renewables energies into the system. So they did a partnership with Zonen. Zonen is a solar energy uh, battery um, company. So they do the hardware. And they have a community across Germany of all the people having those batteries. And they set a pool of batteries for the tenant so that the tenant can use that excess of power to absorb and discharge the excess of power when and where required in a matter of seconds to stabilize the grid without without having to do congestion measure in a certain way, but trying to use green electricity <coughs> from storage to stabilize the grid. The technology that they use for that is Hyperledger, developed by IBM. It's a private technology helping to manage securely and intelligently the flow, the electricity flows across the regions in Germany. It was a project that was highly criti criticized in Germany because everyone said, since when it's the role of a TSO to reach out in the lower voltage for flexibility, everyone said it's the role of a DSO. And uh, uh, the other thing is, for now, it's very early stage. The batteries that they use, they have 24 megawatt batteries um, capacity. So it's not going to solve the whole volatility problem. It's not going to replace the grid expansion. But it is a start. And it's the first time in Germany that we use green electricity from a storage system and, and instead, instead of uh, <coughs> coal or uh, nuclear to stabilize the grid. And also, it's the first time that we integrate the citizen as a participant of the energy transition. And this is something that we try to do at PwC too uh, with a regional utility called TWL, Technische Werke Ludwigshafen. Um, and what we try to do is to build an auto-balancing microgrid um, that is independent from the higher grid level. So we set up a microgrid with B2C consumers, B2B consumers. Uh, we have a sol um, storage station and local solar power producers. The balancing group operator is the TWL, first thing to know. And what we did is we integrated some IoT devices as smart metering, of course, that are connected to other IoT devices. And those IoT devices, they collect production and consumption data. They send it over to one other IoT, a Raspberry Pi, that has direct access to the blockchain. So that Raspberry Pi writes all the transactions, production and consumption transactions, in the blockchain. First thing to know. The other aspect is that we need to balance that balancing group, and we do it with smart contracts. The smart contracts are fed with information from production and consumption, price curves that for now we uh, simulate, and they match supply and demand in that microgrid. So the objective is to create that auto-balancing microgrid and to prove 
um, the feasibility of blockchain and of smart contract. So we've been talking about peer-to-peer -peer energy trading, we've been talking about grid stabilization, about auto balance and microgrid. Um, to me personally, I think this is one of um, the areas where blockchain can bring the most. But there are also other things that are being tested. And this is one project I wanted to tell you about. It's a startup that I discovered for a couple of months called Spectral. And they are launching an, e an energy sharing token. They do it in partnership with Ayana, which is another TSO. And what they do is they enable, um, enable a community in Amsterdam to exchange their electricity with a token. Today, when you consume your electricity, the energy supplier takes the information out of the meter, smart or not, generates an electricity bill, sends it over to the consumer, the consumer pays, and the transaction goes from a bank to another bank. In that case, it's a little bit different. If you take a look at that picture, you see the community of the Sudan in Amsterdam. There are a few offices, a bed and breakfast, a restaurant. Um, uh, I think there's a, there's a, there's a hotel too. Um, yeah, we all want to go on holiday, I think. But it's not the time by now. And they're all connected to a behind the meter smart grid. As you see, they all have solar panels on their roof, which, ex which um, helps them to exchange that electricity together, and they pay for that electricity with a token. That token is called the Juliet, for the jewel, I guess, which is um, changing one important aspect, because in that case, they bypass one big entity. And I wanted to show that project. It's very early stage, and there's a lot of question also regarding the regu regulatory aspect, if they use a sandbox or not. They didn't communicate it by now. Um, but I wanted to show it because it, it proves a little bit what else we can do with blockchain. With that token, they will not only pay for energy, but they can also exchange for goods at the Dusseldorf Cafe, for example, or at the restaurant. So they can build their own resource-based circular economy, which gives a little bit more purpose to what blockchain can do in the energy sector. Today, when it comes to the technology, um, we have a little bit of doubts whether it's really a benefit or not. Because a lot of the things that we do with, that we test today, we already do it with other technologies. Um, and there's a, there's a few reasons for that. The first one is the technology itself. It's still in an early stage. There's a lot of argumentation that we have in the blockchain communities regarding what is the consensus algorithm that is going to scale. Um, whether with questions regarding security, shall we use a private or a, bu or a public technology? It's also an argument that we, have, that we have. Another aspect is the regulatory framework that isn't really helping um, companies to be as innovative as they would like to be sometimes. And another aspect is that we tend to forget that blockchain only is a computer protocol. Because we read a lot in the press, and there's a wall between what we read in the press and how a real implementation project looks like. Um, blockchain is a game changer because it's not a, a shared data bank. It contains validated proof of all the transactions, and it contains validated proof not on one server, but on all the computers of the network, which makes it very complicated to hack. If I wanted to hack one transaction on the blockchain, I would have to hack all the blockchain at every participant of the network, which is an organizationally and computationally very complicated task. But that, that is nothing if I don't have the right business model that I build on top of it. Which brings me to another aspect, what blockchain did prove by now. It did motivate a lot of companies to get involved, to do their first pilot projects. Some are in the rollout and to invent new business models that are reshaping their own uh, business as a whole. Also, what it did prove, and the project that I mentioned, it has a high potential when it comes to reduced costs, and it comes to process optimization. And those tendencies, they will evolve in that way. The only thing that we need to address, that we need to know, is how we address the topic. Because when it comes to blockchain, usually as a consultant, um, our partners and clients, they come to us and they say, we have a problem, we need a solution. 
In that case, they say, we have a solution, it's a blockchain, let's find a problem that fits to it. <laughs> so it's a little different approach. And um, to have a structured process for that, uh, we defined several steps. So from training, design thinking weeks, use case definition, going through proof of concepts, identification or a pilot projects, until rollout and big implementation projects, we have experience in everything. Also, we do not only bring the solution on the regulatory framework, on the business model building or on the financial aspects, but we invest it in a dedicated team that, uh, of programmers that can also build complex programs. So we might be consultants, but we do not only bring the solution on beautiful slides. So to those who might be a little bit uh, skeptical when it comes to blockchain in the energy sector or when it comes to blockchain as a whole, I'd like to ask if you remember the first version of Amazon and the first versions of the internet, how it looked like, because it changed a little bit. So when uh, sometimes I think about how blockchain will, will look like um, in 10 years, and to me, Blockchain absolutely isn't a hype. Actually, it's becoming an underpinning accepted standard, like the TCPIP standard 20 years ago. And it has the potential to change the way parts of the energy industry operates today. And I think the question that we need to ask ourselves is not um, whether what can I do with blockchain or where does it fit it, but more how do I want my company, my organization, to change and to adapt to those new challenges in the energy sector. So yes, blockchain still is in construction. There's a lot of questions mar question mark questions that we need to answer. But it's time to be part of that construction. Thank you.